reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. You're logging into your favorite game, grinding out some gear. A couple of points added to your stats, and you have a virtual beer. Max level is pretty cool, but I'll remind you here, my friend. These games are not about the goal, it's about the journey and not the end. You're listening to MMO Reporter, brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash MMO Reporter. And by Doghouse Systems. Choose your weapon with Doghouse Systems. Don't forget about your ults you need to cherish Each and every little character you've got No matter what level they're at Don't forget about your ults you need to cherish Each and every little Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of MMO Reporter. This is episode 295. I'm Chris and I am joined as always as ever by the ever so affable, ever so gaming friendly, Mr. at MMO Bill. Hello, Bill. Good evening. How are you? Exhausted. Thank you. Exhausted. Tell me a story. Why are you so <laughs> exhausted? The world well, needs to know. We're and, and it's part of the reason why we haven't had a, a show in a little bit. Um, we're we're looking to sell our house, so a lot of work is being put into getting this house ready for market. Uh, a lot of work inside. Um, when we bought the house, it wasn't uh, necessarily finished. Lots of the molding, all the piddly little time-consuming stuff. So we've been doing that for a month or so. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've been doing that pretty much every night till 11, 11.30 at night, then getting up and getting to work. And now finally it's summer vacation and we're pretty much done. So yay, good times. Exciting. But yeah, I've been I've been pretty busy, pretty exhausted. Uh, still managed to get a few things out there. Got the Lotro interview with uh, talking about Mordor for those, uh, those people who are interested. You can go check out the Lotro Reporter stream. Uh, but not much else has been going on gaming wise, which you'll find out when we talk about what we've been playing. What about you, Bill? Mm-hmm. How's things been? How's life been for you? You know what? It's been equally busy. My work has gone crazy. I feel like we're, we're um, oh, what's that? What's the other podcast about uh, grown up gamers and that kind of thing? I need to check my feeds. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's just been a weird stretch of about, well, really a month now where just stuff is popping up and i haven't been playing nearly as much as i wish um now i have been getting into a few games i've been doing a little better than you this week i've got into world of warcraft um i ground out another wow token so i oh. my my streak is alive and uh actually i got really lucky i got a couple of uh bind unequip uh, purples yeah and uh those sold for oh geez 30,000 gold. Oh, wow. Something like that. So that's a big kickstart. The yeah. price of tokens is very high right now. It's creeping up to almost 130 grand oh, on average. Oh, my find. gosh. It's, Sorry. It was, it, yeah. So, I mean, that's a, what is that, a 30% or 35% growth in the last three months, two months? When it's we, a lot. When Legion came out, I think we were starting and looking at like 30 or 40,000 for tokens. Oh yeah, yeah. It and, was, I, you yeah. know, and maybe this is a lesson to take to the next expansion, everybody. That uh, to, as the expansion is new, gather your mats, sell your mats, cash mm-hmm. out, load up your your Blizz balance, and uh, take advantage of the start of the expansion. Because the le- the the deeper into the expansion you go, uh, the less relatively lucrative the economy seems to be for casual players. Yeah. So that first bit yeah. or that first stretch is really your chance to make some bank. So. Yeah. Anyway, that because I mean that's a pattern that I think has held for several expansions now, right? Like this is not new to Legion, if I remember correctly. No, I don't think so. I think that as as the more 
I guess hardcore players got through the content of the expansion quicker. Uh, they were able to get into the mat grinding times. And then by the mm -hmm. time they'd made their money, then all the filthy casuals would get to that point where they were done the content and could then grind out the, uh, the mats and then prices dropped. Yeah. Well, and the fact that expansions always start with no flying, which uh, flying obviously mm -hmm. shaped the market quite a bit because gathering becomes so much easier when you can fly around. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you hear that? That with 7.3, the new zone that's going to come in with 7.3, uh, I won't spoil because I guess it's still a little bit fresh and it might be spoilerish. But anyway, there's a new zone, no flying. Really? How are yep, they going to do that just a rule or is there going to be some sort of in-game explanation for it? it it's, I think there's going to be an in-game game explanation for it, but it's going to be a stupid explanation. Well, because... Yeah. Cause my first thought is boo. Yeah. That's think, dumb. Well, and it's an interesting argument because there's still a lot of people that think flying is the worst thing that happened in world of Warcraft. Well, some and people I... are wrong sometimes can't help but think exactly the opposite that it's absolutely <laughs> the best well yeah. and we'll talk about this a little bit later as we get into the podcast but world of warcraft is i i find that there's anyway no i'm going to save it for later i'm not going to have that argument right now okay. um we're moving on uh so the steam sale popped this week and i bought firewatch that's actually been on my list for a long time and for those of you that don't know firewatch is not an mmo sorry but it's a it's a single player storytelling game and it's basically about uh a dude working for the forest service in uh colorado i think in the 80s in yeah i haven't played it so i don't know anyway it's it's basically a narrative game and it's meant to be that like it's that you're not it's not a shooter. It's not uh, a sword and, and bow type game or anything like that. It's very much just a storytelling narrative game. And I've only got into, I'm only maybe a couple hours into it right now. So yeah. I've still got a ways to go, but it's also not a long game. I think uh, I've read that the play time on it is about 10, 12 hours or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a change of pace, if you just want to have a story, if you want to have something that maybe you can play as like a controller handoff game where you and somebody else take turns playing a narrative up on the big screen or something like that, I'm really enjoying it. I think they've done it quite well. It's very right. engaging. And even though I know that it's not fantastic and I'm not going to be assaulted by skeletons or demons or anything like that, it's still very tense. Mm -hmm. Like it's enough to kind of keep you on your toes. It's not a thriller or at least it isn't yet, but yeah. it's enough to be just engaging. Right. Engaging is a good word for it. So anyway, yeah. that's Firewatch. I've been enjoying that so far. Um, Darren and I did uh, our stream last week, and we actually bought the Necromancer pack for Diablo 3. Oh, okay. Played that and had a ton of fun with that. Oh, Corpse Explosion is, I don't care what game ever, there's no better spell in any game ever than Corpse Explosion. I challenge our listeners to find a cooler spell than Diablo 3 Corpse Explosion on the Necromancer. Hmm. It's just, well, and it's even better when you've got dual, like, okay, so the mechanic is, because like, I'm guessing you haven't played a Necro in, D in D3 I'm watching yet, right? your stream right now, so is everybody else. Oh, sweet. Um, so the, the, the mechanic for uh, the Necromancer is a, a lot of the things that fuel their spells are the corpses that get left on the ground, which right. makes perfect sense for a Necromancer. So if you have dual Necromancers, every corpse is basically dual fuel. So mm. corpse explosion consumes these corpses on the ground. And you can imagine that basically as you get into a big fight, the corpse explosions going off are just glorious right. and you just mow everything down and oh it's it's so satisfying it's satisfying is the best word for it it's um uh, it's like when it's like bubble wrap <laughs> like when you're, it's like popping like except they're corpses so it's yeah. like corpse bubble wrap it's so fun okay well that sounds interesting i guess i'll have so, to make another jump but it's only the necromancer no new content correct I don't believe it's much for new content, no. 
Uh, so yeah, some people will say that 15 bucks for a new class is a bit rich for a game, especially a game as old as Diablo 3 now. It's so weird to be calling Diablo 3 old, but here we are. Yeah. Um, it, it's so, yeah, I, I, I get that, but I also use the Blizzard balance that I've been farming up just from money that I made playing WoW. So right. I don't feel like I actually spent 15 bucks. I feel like I spent 120,000 gold. Yeah. Which, when you put it that way, is actually not so bad. I, I saw a story. I wish I could find it. I forgot to grab it. Uh, where somebody has already bought like the most expensive version of the of the um, Destiny two packs, all through Blizzard Balance and oh. and uh, if tokens there and are, stuff. There are people in World of Warcraft sitting on tens of millions of gold. I know like, this is this is nothing. There are people who know how to do the auction house in World of Warcraft that <clears throat> my struggle to just pay for my subscription by farming mats and everything. Yeah. They would chuckle at and to call it adorable. And that would be like a good week for them is everything I've made in the lifetime of the of the World of Warcraft Legion expansion. Yeah. These people are probably doing in like a week. Right. And good for them. And I just, I don't have the, I don't have the, I shouldn't say I don't have the skill because I think if I actually sat down and studied it and did my homework, I could probably do it. But I think you have to have a lot of patience sitting on the auction house, sniping the things that you want to snipe and being a little bit kind of ruthless. You have to be willing to spam, sell in trade chat and everything like that. And then you have to like talk to people in trade chat, which is just disgusting. Yeah. And uh yeah, anyway, it's it's uh anyway, getting back to <laughs> getting back to the economy of it. Um it's not it's not for me. It may someday be, you never know, but it's hard for me to build up the patience to yeah. want to be to put in my 10,000 hours into World of Warcraft trading to become an expert at it. I'm just not willing to do that. Yeah. So that's been basically my week. So, Chris, I know you haven't been... I know you've played a game, so you can talk about that, but yeah. we're going to play a little yeah. different game for you since you <laughs> didn't. You played real life. We're going to play... What did you wish you played? Oh, uh, more ESO. Um, I really yeah. have been enjoying that. I'm still... I've got little... I finished the main storyline for Morrowind, but I've still got little mm -hmm. nooks and crannies of stuff to finish on that continent, on that little island, not the continent but on the little island, and I'm really enjoying that, and I've been dying to go back into there. Um, wow, just for the grind and gold, and really, I need to get myself, like, about nine tokens to get yeah. my balance high enough to buy the most expensive version of Destiny 2. <laughs> so that's my goal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you cannot buy the physical collector's edition with your Blizzard balance. Correct, yes. Makes me sad. Um How how long did it take you to chew through all the uh, Morrowind content? Oh, gosh, like eight hours. Oh, okay, so it was not huge. No, not, and and that's something I'll talk about in my video. It's uh, it's it's a full-priced expansion. Uh, it, it would be, okay, I'll put it this way. It would be amazing DLC. But ESO mm -hmm. splits their DLC and their expansions into different categories. Expansions, you have to pay... It was, what, 50, 60 bucks for the expansion. You get all yeah. this stuff. DLC is, like, the little content updates that they've had, like the Thieves Guild and um, other stuff. Um, or Oracle, blah, 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 blah. Um, a different <laughs> area that you could go to. And so all this other stuff. DLC, though, comes with your subscription. So if you have a subscription, you get all this stuff. So you, no matter whether you had a subscription or not, you had to pay for this expansion. I don't, I don't know if it was fantastic enough for that price, but it would have been mm -hmm. killer DLC. So, because in my life, everything revolves around Guild Wars 2, yep. Heart of Thorns was kind of criticized a little bit for releasing with what seemed like a small amount of content. And it was a similar price point. I think it was selling for about 50 bucks or yeah. 40 bucks for the expansion or something yeah. like that a couple of years ago. Yeah. If you had to compare the Morrowind offering to the Heart of Thorns offering, what do you think had a, had more bang for your buck? Heart of Thorns, hands down. Yeah? Yep. Uh, just, uh, just 
I mean, it had similar stuff, new class, new areas, but there's just more content um, mm -hmm. in Guild Wars 2. That being said, I'm enjoying Morrowind more than I enjoyed Heart of Thorns. Yeah. Uh, I really like the story. I like the flow through all the content. I think it's absolutely brilliant. But it's the price tag that kind of takes away a little bit. So that's okay. what I wish I'd been playing. I did play something, though, a little bit of something while I was waiting yeah. for you because you were a little late tonight. If you remember a few years back at PAX, we played uh, a game called Dreadnought. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I saw a tweet somewhere that uh, that it was available on. Well, it was available. It was out. It wasn't costing money. So hey, I uh, <laughs> I, I I downloaded it and I played a game while I was waiting for you. Hmm. And I had a ton of fun. We won! Yay! I don't know if this is. Um, if this is just my, uh, how can I my my luck? Uh, I don't think it's my skill or my talent, but uh, I seem to win every match, first match that I go into. Uh, in any, I won my first ESO PvP. I'm winning one, my first Dreadnought one. Yeah, so. Maybe I'll be awesome forever, or maybe I'll kind of <laughs> suck. I have a feeling it's going to be the, the latter. Yeah. Anyways, so yep. I did enjoy that, though. It was a lot of fun shooting off all sorts of missiles and stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Good cool. time. Uh, cool. Yeah, before we get on to the news, want to send a quick shout-out to our patrons. Thank you so much, those of you who go to patreon.com slash Reporter and support what we do here on the MMO Reporter Network. You are the reason we can keep these shows going. So thank you very, very much. If you want to help support what we do, just go to patreon.com slash Reporter and uh, take a look at what we offer as rewards and what patronage level works for you. All right, Bill, we have got some fantastic, some amazing, some wonderful news coming out of the people at Artcraft Entertainment. Crowfall is bringing in campaigns very, very soon, TM. Oh, uh, soon. I, I thought you were going to say it was done. No, but they've actually got a lot that's that's coming in here. So these these the first campaign that they're going to bring in here, and this is still pre-alpha in the campaign that they're bringing in here. I think I'm I'm feeling like this is the last chunk before they go from pre-alpha into alpha. Uh, once they're they're sort of got this campaign running, uh, I think they're gonna. And that's just my guess. I haven't I don't have any information or anything like that. But uh, yeah, I think I think this is going to be the last step before alpha. Uh, so mm -hmm. it is going to be uh, my favorite. If you remember our first conversations about Crowfall, uh, my my discussion on this was that my favorite type of campaign would be the ones with the three factions, Order, Chaos, and Balance. And uh, I, uh, I was really interested in that idea of Balance being the team that constantly switches sides as they try to make sure that neither of the other sides win. And, and as far as that goes, they've actually got a really cool thing here. I'm scrolling down uh, so that people can see. The, the meter that will be at the top of your screen all the time within this campaign has three different zones. On the left is chaos in red. The sort of beige in the middle is balance. And then uh, chaos, or order is on the right. And so see. as you... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, nope. yeah, I finished... Yeah, uh, order and chaos are trying to pull things one side or the other, and balance just wants to keep things in the middle. And and basically, you win by holding more forts and keeps in the uh, in the campaign. So that part of it, I'm really excited about. What do you think about this being the first type of campaign that they're bringing? Oh, geez, how did you know that I had something to say about this? <laughs> um, no, I I'm curious about how this is going to shake out because I feel like there's going to be a big push, especially in the first, I'm going to be curious to see if this is how it plays out in the first one, that there's going to be a big push towards balance. 
that it looking at the bar, I feel like it's going to be really hard to swing it one way or the other in terms of uh, chaos and order. And that especially when you consider that the, uh, the, the friendliness of balance is going to be based on where the slider is. So if the slider is trending towards order, balance and chaos are friendly to each other. Mm -hmm. And if it's trending towards chaos, then balance and order are friendly with each other. Mm -hmm. So there's always a bend toward balance, which in my, in one, in one hand should keep a competitive game because that's kind of where you want it is kind of floating around the middle. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like it's going to be, it's going to need to be a Herculean effort to re for either order or chaos to really knock it out. Just looking at the way the game is designed right here. I, and I'm torn about whether I like that or not, because it does, it, it, favors one faction over the other two but at the same time it's good that it favors that faction because all it takes is then a concerted push one way or the other right at the end to kind of knock it into a victory state for one side or the other not to mention the politics are going to be amazing mm -hmm. yeah and the the idea that can you ever trust balance because they could turn on you mid-fight right they, if by technical definition they almost have to right so if there's if you're sitting right in the middle and the match starts to trend towards chaos the game actually changes to the point where order now looks friendly to the balance side yeah like they they're not targetable other than getting hit by friendly fire right? if no fire i think you're still going to be able to target um all of the uh, my understanding is you're still going to be able to target the other factions you're going to have to choose what you do as 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 a balance player uh as far as you know on the meta scale uh helping capture forts and keeps so here's the quote uh victory conditions uh chaos wins blah 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 order wins blah 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 blah, blah. balance wins by assuring ensuring there's no clear right. winner that's fine to facilitate this idea that balance constantly oh, shifts alliances yeah. we set it up such that when one side takes the lead balance that's is automatically awesome. considered an ally to the losing that's faction awesome. in terms of both targeting and friendly fire sorry i needed to finish yeah. the sentence no nope, that's awesome i wouldn't have been able to sleep tonight so um but I yeah like that. That, i like that it's it, i like it but i could see it being a very confusing mechanic especially if the best scenario happens when the match is being decided on the very last day yeah. and it's kind of switching back and forth. Can you imagine how confusing it would be to be a balanced player to have somebody that's showing up red suddenly show up, not red. Well, if there's a you? couple of different fights going on for a couple of different forts or something, or a, a keep falls or, at the other end of the map. And all of a sudden that tips the balance one way or the other. And then you're in the middle of a battle and boom, you're like, oh, or even better, you're uh, it, you're teamed up with one or two balance people, and you're in a squad of like ten <laughs> order people, yeah. and all of a sudden the balance shifts, and your ten allies are now red. order order sixty six. Oh crap! <laughs> right, like, like they, that, there's so awesome. many cool scenarios that can come out of this, and I am yeah. super excited. But I can also see like people are going to have to prepare themselves for the notion that this is going to be weird. This is not. It doesn't yeah. look like it's going to be predictable. Like when I look at this, I picture myself wanting to play on the balance side of things and being in that middle and kind of having a toe on each side and and play both sides off the other and that kind of thing. I can see that being a lot of fun, but I can also see it being very confusing. Yeah, my the guild I'm currently a part of uh, is looking to go chaos with these campaigns. Oh, okay. So we'll have oh, to see. Oh, you didn't invite it... me to your guild. Well, we oh. talked about it. You said we'd talk about it another time. Well, yeah, and that was like two months ago. <laughs> yeah, we never talked was. about yeah, totally. my feeling. You have a feeling. Yeah, and it's hurting. <laughs> All right. So uh, the other cool things coming with this campaign is that there is now a world map and a fog of war on the world map. But to help things mm -hmm. out, uh, if you are sending out a scouting party and they have uh, some crafted maps in their inventory, they can sort of click on the map in a certain area where they are and create a scrawled map that can be traded, purchased, or looted uh, to give other players on their team uh, some more visual 
uh, clues of, of the, the area that they made the map of. So they'll go to an area, they'll clip, click on the map, and if they have a, a map in their inventory, they'll create a scrawled map, and they can go back and give that to the uh, to the, the person who's leading the charge for whatever faction, and they'll now that fog of war will be lifted in that area for uh, the person who has that map. Yeah, I love this. This is yeah. them kind of delivering on the notion that they wanted to make scouting a very important part right. of the game. So yeah. now I could see this going a couple different ways. Obviously, the map has to be big enough that scouting is a significant effort. You don't want to have right. your scout run around for 10 minutes and then the map is completely discovered and, and the maps can be disseminated to anybody on your side that needs it. Yeah. That would be dumb. If scouting is a difficult thing where your map can unlock a significant part of the map, but maybe that fades over time, or if you're like, if basically is if there's a consistent market to keep those maps in place for your faction that actually helps your faction. Yeah having those lone rangers run around and not necessarily be sniping wizards, but uh, actually be there to actually draw up the map and try to give your side an advantage by just virtue of the fact that they know what's where. Yeah. That could be, this could be a very cool mechanic. Yes. It absolutely has the big risk though of being a short-term gain thing that uh, where the map just gets completely exploded by having a, a, a scouting blitz which anybody who's played any kind of uh, uh, RTS or, or, or anything like that will tell you that's the very first thing you do is you put your feelers out and your scouts out as soon as you can so you don't have to deal with the fog of war anymore. Yeah. If that's the mechanic, I could see it being one of those kind of short-lived I don't, benefits that people will get tired of. Yeah, I don't know. Because of the way they've built up the skills and discipline system as well, uh, you can do things like uh, pick certain disciplines to increase the reveal distance of the Fog of War, and uh, cartographers can increase the size of the area they can scrawl onto a single map. Both of those things mm -hmm. are, are things that will require uh, player investment in them, and I don't think they'd build the maps in a way that those investments would feel worthless and that's what i want to see i want to see how that plays out in like season three of the uh campaign yeah because obviously it's divided up into four seasons and the third season when everybody's kind of discovered everything what's the value of a scout at that point i want their the scout to still have a value so i'm curious to see how that's going to yeah. play yeah so we talked about forts and keeps earlier uh forts uh, earlier forts are smaller structures uh, you'll be able to find mm -hmm. abandoned forts and keeps across the land across the map forts are meant to change hands often in fact all you have to go in uh, do to to take control of a fort is run in and click f on the dragon statue in the middle and you'll claim it on behalf of your faction now you're not automatically defending it uh, you're just claiming it other factions can do the same thing so you're going to have to have some people defending it um, it, it does become a temporary base of operation. You can respond there, access personal and faction containers, and organize and craft in sort of relative safely, right? Um, mm -hmm. They won't have the crafting stations enabled in this particular first campaign, but uh, they'll do it soon as they move sort of most of the crafting stuff into the campaign world from the Eternal Kingdoms. Uh, keeps are bigger structures, um, and to claim it, you will plant a tree of life within its confines. Uh, once claimed by a faction, the strongholds can only be taken through a siege, uh, which is basically what we did in the first testing, the Siege Perilous. Uh, well, one of the first testings after Hunger Dome. Um, and uh, you're going to have to repair them, which will require some materials and stuff like that, uh, which they're talking about some different not spawn points, but some different points in the world where mm -hmm. you'll be able to do that, like uh, um, mines, mills, and quarries and stuff like that. So lots of complexity here, right? Like it's not just a go out and mine and bring it here. Like there's, there's, this is going to require some coordination. Mm -hmm. Now you were big yeah. into Dark Age of Camelot and you did a lot yes. of realm versus realm versus realm. Uh, yeah. How much of it was coordinated and how much was, A, this is where the Zerg is going today. It depends. The best RVR 
was coordinated where you had like a core group of people that were saying okay this is the order we're going to hit the keeps in uh this is uh we're going to lay a trap here so that when the the zerg response comes in they get kind of pincered that was when rvr was at its best now that said what was most common was zerg a runs into zerg b and they had a little slap fight in the middle of nowhere and then Everybody died and just did it again. So kind of like Wav Wav in uh, in Guild Wars Two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's by far the most common. And I don't know, maybe Crowfall being it, it, the, by virtue of the fact that that's all you do in the game, a little bit more uh, finesse to your strategy will be will will play out more. But I, if I were to guess what the default's going to be like, you're going to get Zerg versus Ver- Zerg slap fights you know what i i don't i don't know if that's going to be the case i have a feeling this is going to be more along the lines of black desert online which really i think it's going to turn into this virtual world where you're going to have guilds that and 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 alliances based on factions that are going to take over certain areas and okay we'll take care of this area you take care of that area because there's no it doesn't seem like there's a lot of maybe if you're if you go around fort hopping and and sort of uh, flipping forts all the times like they do in guild wars 2 but i think mm-hmm. there's there's too much here to really unco- encourage that like too much complexity mm-hmm. that's well, my thought and ho- hopefully but <clears throat> again history history's mm-hmm. already shown how these things tend to go so we'll see yeah uh, there's going to be some import and export restrictions as well. So, uh, uh, the idea being that you've got your eternal kingdom, which is always there, which is sort of your home, your housing, but it's more than that. You throw all of your, um, you can throw resources there to build up your eternal kingdom, build parcels of land, uh, uh, structures for that, uh, some crafting as well, but some different campaigns are going to have different rules of, import and export into that campaign so you can only bring so much with you when you go into the campaign uh so you won't be able to craft that uber set of world destroying armor in your eternal kingdom and bring it into every campaign some may Mm -hmm. be like that others may be you bring nothing you show up naked and it's like a survival game right you have to build everything so this one's going to have some restrictions they haven't said exactly what it's going to be but uh, they're not going to start with a lot of bringing stuff in so lots of exciting stuff here uh as well as all that there's also a new character creator which looks really pretty bill Mm -hmm. it looks pretty uh where now that they've gone away from the archetype system and moved to race and class um they've rebuilt their character creator to show that as well uh as the usual cosmetic stuff you're gonna have your advantages and disadvantages so your advantages cost points your disadvantages give points so you can give yourself some advantages and some some disadvantages uh and make the perfect character for you so it's kind of cool and disciplines and stuff are all in game and skills so that's that's not part of the character creation so yep. lots of stuff coming from Crowfall. Very excited about this. Uh, look for some more from us about Crowfall. Bill, I have a really, I love the idea of, of the two of us building characters and going out and being scouts and and yep. and uh, going or out just the two to, of us. to be like perimeter skirmishers mm-hmm. and, yeah. and scouts slash resource gatherers and yeah. like not necessarily just following the Zerg. Although I, I do... I am intrigued about what a big keep fight will look like. Like if we, if we get like a coordinated, okay, at eight 30 tonight, we are going to obliterate this keep everybody be here or be square. Then. Yeah. I, I know I blew that. That's fine. That's okay. uh, but uh, that like, I could see keep fighting being very interesting. Mm-hmm. Siege as Paradise as was fun. I really yeah. enjoyed it. So. So that I'm looking forward to that, but I'm also looking forward to perimeter fighting being a a viable way. I sure I sure hope that uh, that perimeter fighters aren't just going to be Zerg magnets that uh, mm-hmm. draw fifty of your closest friends just because you engaged in a two on two or a one on one or something right. like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, very exciting. Anyway, yeah. So speaking of exciting and 
probably slightly more trepidatious, I'm thinking, is uh, World of Warcraft uh, 7.3. We're starting to get some technical details coming out what's going to be quite, uh, happening there. And a trend that's been kind of popping up in World of Warcraft lately is that uh, there's a lot of Diablo-ish features starting to mm -hmm. rear their heads. And one of them, they're, what they're talking about is kind of replicating the rifts functions in Diablo in World of Warcraft. So in Diablo, the way rifts work is it's basically like uh, almost like a miniature instance combat that's designed for one person or a small group of people or something like that mm -hmm. uh, that scales up uh, based on on the the number of people you have and the level you are difficulty you want to set and everything like that mm -hmm. so in world of warcraft apparently we're there there's been a couple of new items uh data mined called depleted rift stones and charged rift stones so and the theory is going that these rift stones are going to charge up these kind of rift like contents or diablo rift type content that you're going to be able to upgrade as you go and it's not really clear if this is going to be single player stuff or small group stuff or raid stuff i don't know it's it, probably not going to be raid stuff but it's it's uh it's they they kind of described it in the patch notes and right now the patch notes are super vague but well, they're calling the, them invasion points yeah well it's name. not necessarily the same thing they're, they're this the the stuff that the icy veins found which is where we got the story was data mined from it and they're they're making the connection that this is uh the same thing the invasion points See, and then it seems like a pretty reasonable guess to mm -hmm. me because that's kind of mm -hmm. how invasion points worked before is everything exploded out of a rift, sort of. Yeah. It'd be yeah, interesting so to see if they brought in some of the procedural generation for the, the content because all the Diablo dungeons, you know, they, they have a, a theme for a specific level, but it's all procedurally generated, right? They put different tiles together. It'd be interesting mm -hmm. to see if they did a similar thing for highly repeatable content, very grindy for WoW as well. Well, and this is where my trepidation, trepidation is coming up because this is, I, I feel like World of Warcraft is really starting to go down that road of repeatable content that's just too repeatable. Like they, uh, world quests are now, like I've done every world quest, I think 10 times it mm -hmm. seems like in, in World of Warcraft. That's repeatable content that's just gone to the well too many times the chromie add-on that they that they just did that whole quest is meant to be done over and over and over again the same the same the same until you finally get it right like they, they, the yeah. same with the the challenging um uh solo instances that they put together mm -hmm. for uh for the broken isles uh expansion or, or, or patch 7.2 yeah. uh, it's meant to be done over and over and over again until you master the fight and finally get through it like they're making their content to be done repeatedly like it, it's instead of being of just immersing yourself the first time consuming it and then moving on it's meant to be done over and over again and i get the logic for that because world of warcraft needs people to keep consuming this content for a long time they want to keep everybody's attention uh until the next content blast comes out so it's logical and it makes sense but i it's also getting exhausting like the the notion like the whole chromey thing once i realized exactly how it was playing out i got worn out on really fast and i was kind of excited for that i thought it was going to be a neat idea like the whole notion that uh the story behind chromey trying to figure out or go through a little detective story to figure out how she's gonna die or try to prevent mm -hmm. that i thought was a really cool thing until i realized that the quote-unquote detective work is just doing the same stuff over and over and over again until you complete an achievement essentially yeah so i'm trepidatious about this trend now that said we are still in a state where this is the best expansion world of warcraft has come out with in maybe ever i'm willing to give it even that that it might be the best one they've done and it's been almost a year since it's been out and it's been engaging for me at least for almost a year there's been some boring parts but it's been close it's uh it's it's yeah I, I feel like it's just going to the well 
a little bit too often and they need or to and they need to change it up maybe this will change it up maybe they're going to take a different tack here and have some some level of procedural generation to give it a little bit of variability or something like that that would be great and i hope that's what it is yeah i just uh i don't know it's uh the thought the idea the the notion that we have another year of this expansion i i that kind of drains me just thinking about that i guess i'm just i'm just uh, i need to jump back in and see if i can get my my interest peaked again i really enjoy it whenever we play but it's no longer for what it was for nearly most of a year the number one thing where i'm like ooh i want to jump back into this and do this and do that right now yeah. it's like okay i got to get see, that freaking I'm still... gold I still have the personal challenge that I've set myself to cover my my yeah. uh, my fees and everything, and it, it almost feels like I've tried I've tried bitten off more than I could chew with that because it is getting to be a chore to log in and try to farm up my ten thousand gold for the day or something like that. Uh, it's it's getting tough, so. Yeah. We'll see how long this goes. That said, yeah. I still, I still feel like I've got my money's worth. This was still a good expansion. Oh yeah, but totally. I, I'm, I'm starting to look around for what else is new and interesting. Yeah. All right, let's move things along here. Talk about our sponsors, Audible. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash MMO Reporter for all the best audiobooks you could ever want. You want an audiobook? Audible is the place to get it. Audiblepodcast.com slash MMO Reporter. Help keep the lights on here at the network. Uh, and doghousesystems.com. Go to doghousesystems.com. Use the coupon code MMO Reporter, and they're going to hit you up with a free SSD to add to your systems. You want a new computer? Go check out our friends over at Doghouse. Systems. out of mana pull that world boss out of party run through trash you'll be sorry take a bio break without announcing they may not rhyme but they're quite possibly the dumbest ways to die dumbest ways to die All right, Bill, we got some more news. Are you ready for some news? We've mentioned this game before, mostly about its crossplay between PC and mobile platforms. This is, of course, Albion Online. Just came out of its open beta. It's going to be launching very soon. It is a sandbox MMO, and I think one of its most interesting features is the idea that it is a... Um, it is cross-play between tablets and computers. Uh, the graphics definitely show that, which, uh, being the graphics snob that I am, does bug me a little bit. Uh, but it does seem very, very smooth. Uh, from what I've looked at from a couple of different uh, uh, gameplay and beta review videos and, and stories, it's very focused on trading, crafting, and some combat. Very guild-heavy as far as all the, the economy and stuff goes. Uh, and similar PvP, I guess, to uh, Ultima Online, if you want to uh, think back to games like that. Um, I think what really struck me as as interesting a comment from the lazy peon i'll have a link to the video in uh in the show notes <laughs> he compared this as a good runescape alternative now i didn't think at this point with with the longevity i guess or the age of runescape people were still looking for a runescape alternative um i thought runescape and please send all the hate mail to bill at mmoreporter.com. I thought RuneScape was just something you played because you've been playing it so long you got nothing else to play. People are yep. going to hate me, aren't they? No, I think you're. it's entirely accurate. Everybody yeah. out there is going to recognize that, yes, this is the truth, and it's just the way it is. So it does It does have a very stylized look, uh, almost cel-shaded in its uh, style. Uh, again, probably to make it very friendly to the mobile market. But the fact that this is a full, another full-fledged MMO that is available on mobile uh, tablets and on PC, and it's the same world, is very interesting to me. And the fact that it's a sandbox as well. Uh, some of the, the early MMOs on... Uh, on on mobile were very 
theme park. Very narrow and focused. But this is this does seem to have a very great scope to it. Um, I'm interested while at the same time, I don't know if I'm interested. I don't know if that's a non-answer enough for you. Bill, is this is this tugging at you at all? It's curious, yes. I, I've, I've been interested in this one for a long time, mainly because, again, the, 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 the drive here really seems to be to have this be a player-driven world where the economies are all player-driven, the combat is player-driven, like the world is meant to be shaped by the other players. And the vibe I got from it is a little bit Ultima Online-ish mm -hmm. for yep. what their goals are going to be. So, which it seems like a really interesting goal. The downside is people suck. <laughs> like, right down to their very, very <laughs> core. And no, like in, in a world that, that's player driven and that kind of thing, uh, it seems like people are less interested in playing in the spirit of the game and driving the world the way uh, that, that makes for uh, an engaging game for everybody on both sides. Instead, you get people who w just want to min max and borderline cheat to win. And yeah. that's no fun because. I, I'm not going to lie. I know I'm not going to win Albion online. I'm not going to own it or, or be the, the supreme ruler or anything like that. I don't have that kind of time. I don't have that kind of skill. It's not going to, that's, I don't, I, I'm not going to get that value out of that. So I'm starting from a point where the best I can hope for is that the desires of the player base balance out enough that there is actually going to be a place for everybody to fit because mm -hmm. there's going to be so many competing styles that the whole game just meshes together nicely. The worst case scenario is that there's going to be a clear min max path and the game is just going to get wildly out of whack based off of that. And that would be my concern. Yeah. So I don't know that that's going to happen. I'm not, I don't even necessarily suspect, that that's the most likely thing but if it does happen that would destroy the enthusiasm that i've got for the game right now mm -hmm. so how's that for super negative maybe i should go kick a puppy or something <laughs> like that too just to keep the mood of the discussion going i'd love to hear some thoughts from some of our listeners who have played uh i'll be an online in the beta uh would be great to hear from you okay mm -hmm. shall we move on to the quick mentions bill Yes. Let's dive in. Hey, uh, for all you ESO players, there is a ESO Plus bonus event starting July 5th, which is the day after recording, uh, which should be the day the podcast comes out, going until July 9th. So you'll have a, a good few days there, uh, including a full weekend to uh, check it out. So basically, there's two different things. First, uh, for ESO Plus uh, subscribers, you will get a bonus dwarven crown crate which is pretty good because it gets you it's a loot box basically for every day that you log in um and um <clears throat> for those of you who aren't current eso plus members in the crown store and i'll have instructions in the show notes you'll be able to look in the crown store in game and you'll be able to get a free trial from there. You'll get access to all the dlc game packs i recommend going through uh thieves guild uh, would be the way to go. Uh, Dark Brotherhood's good too. Um, unlimited storage for crafting materials. Double bank space. 10% increase to XP and gold acquisitions. Uh, crafting. All that sort of stuff. Durable, double furniture and collectibles space in player housing. And exclusive ability to dye costumes. So that's basically all the stuff you get for being a ESO Plus subscriber. Uh, and then you also get like... Uh, I think 1,500 crowns. Yeah, there it is. 1,500 crowns, which is the in-game store currency, which you can buy mounts and stuff like that for. And, uh, yeah, other stuff. So you can also uh, save up for a few months. If you do ESO+, Plus, you can actually buy all the DLC, except for Morrowind, which is an expansion, not DLC, for crowns. So if you are a subscriber for a few months, you can buy all that DLC separately and then have it when you cancel your subscription. So, cool. There you go. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be all through this weekend. I'm really enjoying ESO right now. Uh, the warden is awesome. I also love my thief. 
uh, my little stabby stabby dude, Nightblade, I believe it is. So, yeah. Go check that out if you're interested in ESO. Uh, Wild West Online pre-order sale. Bill, I know we have been interested in Wild West Online. We've mentioned it a couple times. Once when it was uh, announced. Another time when we were worried that it might have some connections to people we didn't necessarily like. And now we're going to talk about it again because of its pre-order sale. Now, I'm channeling the spirit of Harry Hall who would yell into his microphone right now, were he on the show, saying, don't pre-order. So there you go. I have I have met my requirement to the, uh, the spirit in which Harry Hall thought about pre-orders. But hey, mm-hmm. if you are interested in that sort of thing, there's some pre-order sale stuff. It's actually a pretty don't good deal. pre-order. Don't friggin' pre-order. This is not a game to pre-order. It might be a fine game. It might even be an excellent game. But just don't. Let them make it and then buy it. That's you know, the way it should be. You know what I find interesting? Get off my lawn. They've got, for the prices, when they've got the sale price, they show what the old price was in euros and the new price in dollars. Yeah, that was clever. That's kind of funky. Well, no, because it's actually, if it's 119 euros, isn't that like actually 130 or 140 dollars? keep going more like 200 right so really it's an amazing deal bill mm-hmm. pardon me i don't know that i haven't checked exchange <laughs> rates but i Anyways, thought it was not quite yeah two american I th- I, dollars I to a I'm, euro but i'm right there with you so there is some sale there if you're interested in that sort of stuff uh listen to bill listen to harry hall uh but if you are going to pre-order you got until the 20th to take a look at that okay bill are you gonna yep. say it one more time don't just don't. Just don't. Just don't. Just don't. Uh, no. Also, last thing here in our quick mentions, uh, Ang Gang, who uh, is f- uh, from Lotro Players, uh, has uh, taken a look at uh, the Bull Roar, which is the test server for Lord of the Rings Online, and has looked at the High Elf character creation. And, uh, Bill, I... Uh, it's kind of like whatever. Like, it's it's... Looks like an elf. Elves all look the same to me. You know what it looks like to me? It looks like a half elf. It looks like uh, a a man and an elf mushed together rather than a a more exquisite version of an elf. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Now that said, you can now play an elf captain. So that's a thing. Yeah. And I know captain you're very fond of. Yeah. So... Yeah, I just I was I was surprised that I guess it is a ten year old game, but um, I was surprised that it kind of looked whatever. Like it, there wasn't some big, it wasn't flourishy. To be fair, it, it it seems like a little bit of a cop out as far as new new race is concerned, because clearly there's no new model. There's some no, it's a new model. It's the new the, the new player model, the new character models that they're going to be rolling out to all of the other races and classes and right. stuff. They started with the not, high elf. Like they're not create. It's not anything outlandish. Like you're not creating this new model slash thing that's out there in the world it's the same as what all the other character models are going to be it's the how same they're gonna, how they're gonna look I guess. yeah so it's 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 lore based so I, and i mean i've always been a fan of how lord of the rings online presents their lore hopefully they kind of stay true to everything and and build this up as a as another solid addition to the the lore of the game but uh yeah i mean at this point it's not overwhelming yeah unless you are an absolute uh uh high elf fan and the regular woodland elves were just stupid and you couldn't possibly see yourself ever playing one huh. now you can have pointy ears and still play lord of the rings online Be it ticks all the boxes there you go all right bill uh let's get into what we have been what we are planning to play next week i hope i have time and and the ability to get down to my computer. I want to play some more ESO. Want to dig into Lotro. I just need a little bit more to finish the pre-Mordor content as far as the main stuff goes. Uh, I got to keep going in WoW. I don't want to spend money on it. And I want to get Diablo or Destiny 2. Uh, and last but not least, uh, some Guild Wars 2. Because 
who doesn't want to play Guild Wars 2, right, Bill? Yeah. What about you, Bill? I do. I don't, actually. It's not on my list for this week. Bill! Um, I'm going to be scrambling for game time this week. I think uh, World of Warcraft is there because I need to chew through more gold and i feel like i had a good run some boes so it, it's it's kind of like going back to the well uh i i feel like the it's the, the the lottery balls are coming up my way so i'll probably keep doing that i i am into firewatch and i kind of want to chew through that story more and i'm hoping that I, I would like to get through that and i also had so much fun exploding corpses in diablo 3 yeah, so i think uh -huh, i'm gonna do uh -huh. that a little bit and go. I probably will get into Guild Wars 2. I think we're probably going to try to stream a little bit of that. So mm -hmm. that will be uh, on on my list too. But uh, yeah, that's that's about what I'm looking at. Good times. All right, Bill, if people want to get hold of us, let us know what they're playing, what they think of some of the stuff that we talked about this week. How can they get a hold of us? Well, they can visit us over at uh, MMOReporter.com for the central hub of all the MMO Reporter universe. You can send us an email to MMO.Reporter at gmail.com. You can visit us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MMO Reporter. You can tweet at either of us, either at MMO underscore Reporter for Chris or at MMO Bill for yours truly. You can give us a call at 616-666-6778. Leave us a voicemail. Let us know what you think. Uh, let us know. And again, I asked for... What spell in what MMO is better than Corp Explosion? Corpse Explosion in Diablo 3? <laughs> I know Diablo 3 is not an MMO, so we can head that off right now. But what's cooler than Exploding Corpses? There I we just, go. I want to hear that, and I want to hear it in a voicemail. That would be awesome. Uh, visit us on YouTube at youtube.com slash MMO Reporter Network. You can uh, head over to Patreon at patreon.com slash MMO Reporter. If you'd like to contribute, help us keep rolling with uh, with the shows. And, and honestly, they're going to keep rolling. This summer will iron out for us. It's going to be beautiful and magical and wonderful. And finally, if you're not a Patreon kind of person, then you can head over to MMO Reporter mmoreporter.com slash support for other ways that you can help us out. Thanks, Bill. It's been Thanks, a Chris. pleasure recording with you, as always. Likewise. And thanks to everyone who came out and hung out in the chat rooms. It was fun to have you there as we talked MMOs. Thanks to all of you who watched the video on YouTube, watched it on the site, however you consume the show. Thank you very much. We hope that you enjoyed this show, but most importantly, don't, we don't, hope don't, 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 to don't, see don't, you in game. Don't forget about your ult you need to cherish each and every little character you've got, no matter what. Thanks for watching the video, everybody. Don't forget to check out all the other podcasts at mmoreporter.com or by clicking on any of the links here. And please check out our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash mmoreporter. Thanks, everyone, and see you in game.